Hello to all of my fellow NaNoWriMo authors. It is that time of year again where we are going to start prepping for NaNoWriMo. If you have happened upon this video and you're thinking, what is this mystical thing called Preptober or NaNoWriMo? Just a brief intro is that National Novel Writing Month or otherwise known as NaNoWriMo is a 30 day challenge for authors all across the world to write a 50,000 word novel in 30 days. It is quite the challenge and it is a fun adventure and it is just as much about the people and the community as it is about the writing, but it is incredible and I'm so glad that you're thinking of participating in NaNoWriMo this year. Preptober is what those of us doing NaNoWriMo have come to lovingly call the month of October because it is all about prepping your novel, prepping your space, prepping everything you need to get ready for NaNo. So I am very excited to bring you some of my best tools for Preptober. So today I'm just going to give you an overview of how I prep for NaNoWriMo and I have also designed a really cool Preptober planner that you can get for free. All you have to do is go to the description box below and sign up for my mailing list. I have a ton of free resources there for you that are going to help you plan out your novel, plan out your world, your series, all of that stuff. If you are new to my channel, there are lots of great videos that you can watch about how to plot your novel, how to edit your novel, how to plan your series world and world building and all of that good stuff. So I hope that you will subscribe, sign up for my newsletter and stick around. But we are going to talk about the best ways to prep for NaNoWriMo. I also am going to have videos throughout the entire month on how to get ready for NaNo, how to write faster, how to stick with it even when you get stuck. And I honestly am ridiculously excited. If you're new to me, I am author Sarah Cannon. I have currently published 26 novels, hoping to get to 27 before the end of this year. And I am so excited to be participating in NaNoWriMo for the 12th or 13th time. I'm not sure, but it's definitely more than 10 years. I don't always win, but I always have an amazing time, which feels like a win. So I'm glad that you're here. Let's talk about some of the best ways to prep. And you will find all of these in detail in a checklist in that Preptober planner that you can grab through the link down below. So there are really five steps to prepping for NaNoWriMo. And the first is to prep your plan. When it comes to really getting ready for NaNo and setting yourself up for success, it's essential that you create a plan that is realistic and that really puts some thought into how you're going to achieve this epic goal of writing 50,000 words in just 30 days. So one of the first things that I want you to do is take a realistic look at your time. I pretty much start every course and everything I talk about with this idea of a realistic look at time. And the reason behind this is because if you're looking at all 30 days of November and you set that word count goal for yourself of 1667, which is the official daily word count goal for NaNo, if you're going to hit those 50,000 words, then you might not be taking into consideration days that you're going to need to take off. So maybe every Saturday you have a prior engagement and you have very little time to actually get those words in. So if you plan that you're going to write all 30 days and you set your word count goals accordingly, and then you have to take all four Saturdays in the month off, you're going to end up way behind and stressed out. So the first thing to do is really look at the calendar I've included in the Preptober checklist and look at the month of November. Mark off any days that you know you're not going to be able to write. Then decide whether you want to work in any buffer days for the month. Maybe you just always have issues with migraines or you're dealing with uh, low motivation and you can't really imagine that you're going to write all 30 days. So you want to work in a couple of buffer days, whatever it is, take a total look at how many days you will not be writing over the course of November and then subtract that number from 30. So let's say you need six days off and that's working in a couple buffer days and Saturdays off. Then you take 50,000 words or whatever your custom word count goal is, and you divide it by the number of days. So if you take 50,000 words and you're only going to write 24 days out of the 30, then that gives you a different word count goal, 2,084 words a day on those 24 days that I'm actually going to be writing. 
So if you want to set yourself up for success, I highly recommend going through this process of planning your time, how many days you need off, and then taking your word count goal and dividing it by the real number of days that you have available. Once you know your daily word count goal, the number of words that you really need to actually write per day. Set up some kind of writing tracker that allows you to make sure that you're on track. Now you can set this up in the NaNoWriMo website, but there's also a paper tracker here for you in the workbook. Another way that you might want to do this is by using a software online called Pacemaker. So it's pacemaker.press. And this is a website where you can put in your project and you can tell it what days you're planning to write more or less, and you can set up your word count goals in more customized ways. I'm just starting to play around with Pacemaker and I have to say, I really like it. The next step is to create a plan for when you're going to write every day. How are you going to clear your schedule? How many hours are you going to write? Is it going to be every morning? If you just make a plan to stick in that writing whenever you get a chance, chances are you're going to get to the end of the day and realize that you never had a chance to write. Set yourself up for success early by choosing the exact times of day, your ideal writing schedule, that you're going to be fitting that in. And make sure that if you're planning to write 2,084 words a day, you're realistically setting aside enough time each day to write those 2,000 words. This is also a great time to plan where you're going to write, where in your house you want to write, what computer you want to use, and all those types of decisions, but also which program you're going to write in. Are you going to write in Scrivener, Word, Google Docs? Where are you going to actually keep your novel? Are you going to handwrite it in a notebook? Make these decisions early and then make sure you're familiar with the software and that you've planned for a way to back up your work every day as well. Another fun thing I like to plan for is my rewards. So I think it's really fun and an extra piece of motivation to give myself a reward every 10,000 words. So when I hit that first 10,000 word count goal, I'm going to have a reward planned for myself. Sometimes it's as simple as a new set of my favorite pins. Sometimes it's a reward that doesn't even cost any money, but it's just indulging myself in a night of my favorite romantic comedy movies or my favorite zombie movies, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. But setting a reward for every 10,000 words and then maybe one bigger reward for when you hit that 50,000 word count goal can be so motivational and can help you push through those days when you just don't feel like writing. And finally, when you're preparing your plan, think about what you're going to eat during NaNoWriMo. I know this can sound kind of silly, but especially if you're someone who works a full-time job or goes to school full-time anyway, or maybe you have kids at home and life is just really busy these days. It's important if you're going to be trying to add extra time into your already busy schedule to get those words in, to figure out how you can prep your meals ahead of time, plan your meals out in advance, and maybe get a little bit of help from Uber Eats or Postmates or some kinds of foods to food deliveries or have meals frozen ahead of time. But be thinking about ways that you can buy yourself some extra writing time with some well thought out pre planned meals. It's also fun to think about what kind of coffees you might want to drink, having your favorite selection of teas available for those nights when you're up writing late, or your favorite snacks to have on hand for when you're writing. Once your plan is in place, the second step is to prep your tools. One of the first things you want to do is make a list of all the tools you're going to need to plan your novel. You can go all out on this, or you can go super minimalist and just have a place to keep notes inside Google Docs. But I'm going to have an entire video coming up about all of my favorite tools for NaNoWriMo, so be on the lookout for that. But I also included a planner or checklist for your NaNoWriMo prep tools inside the Preptober planner that I have for you. But this for me includes things like a plotting notebook, highlighters, colored pens, washi tape, stickers, whiteout, index cards, lined paper, and my favorite black gel pens. It's also important to, at this point, know which computer you're going to write on, 
I have this really cute Alpha Smart. I always get a lot of questions about this and I haven't actually been using it for a couple of years now, but I think I'm gonna pull this back out for NaNoWriMo. This little machine is called an Alpha Smart. The one I have is called a Dana. They don't make these anymore, but sometimes you can find them on eBay. And I just pulled mine apart and painted it with this beautiful teal color paint, but it's basically just a word processor, kind of like a digital typewriter. The reason I love typing on this is because there are no distractions. I can't really get onto my Facebook or any other social media or start chatting with people when I'm on this device. So it also doesn't allow me to read back over a lot of what I've written. So it eliminates that internal editor. So I can talk more about this if you guys want to hear more, but basically you want to know which computer you're going to be writing on. Make sure that everything's working in terms of which writing program are you going to use Google Doc. Make sure everything's charging properly and you have all the tools that you need. This also inc includes making sure you have a backup routine. You're going to use Dropbox maybe, or email yourself a copy each night before bed, but know which software you're using, what backups you're using, what computer you're using. In terms of tools, it's also super important to think about your health. So for me, I like to have this nice big water bottle always on my desk. I use the Hydrate Spark bottle, which I have to say is kind of pricey, but it does keep track of my water consumption throughout the day. So when I'm doing something like NaNoWriMo or working really hard, I love to have this kind of water bottle that tracks how much water I've had so I can make sure that I'm drinking enough water. I like to try to drink at least 70 ounces of water a day. So this helps me stay on track. On that extra checklist that I've given you in the Preptober planner, brainstorm any other tools that you may need to make your experience more fun, like a nice pair of headphones or a mouse for your laptop, maybe a pad for your wrist so that you don't get sore, or a nice notebook that you can dedicate to your thoughts throughout the month. Step number three is to prep your writing crew. As I said earlier, NaNoWriMo is just as much about the people and the friendships that you make as it is about the writing. Of course, we want to get 50,000 words done, and it's an amazing, inspirational time to really motivate yourself and immerse in your novel. But you're missing out on the magic if you don't connect with your fellow authors. I have met some of my absolute best writing friends through NaNoWriMo. So make sure that you sign up for an account at NaNoWriMo.org. Create your project there. Let us know what you're writing. Fill in a few details about yourself. Locate your local region. So for me, that is the Low Country Rimos here in the Charleston area. Join in on the forum discussions, see what events they have going on. Of course, this year is going to be a little bit different because there won't be in person write ins for most of us, but there are still going to be some great online events and chances to connect with people online. So join those forums. Another place to look for friends and to join together with that community and connection is to get on social media and start following some of the more popular hashtags like hashtag NaNoWriMo or hashtag NaNoWriMo 2020 or hashtag Preptober. I also have a writing group called the HB Word Sprints Challenge that we'd love for you to join. We'll have live writing sprints going on throughout the month, but there will also be live sprints going from some incredible author tubers here on YouTube. So search for those videos on live writing sprints, hang out with fellow authors, get to know people through Instagram or Facebook groups, even discord servers for writers are out there. So get involved and get into the community. Step number four is by far the most important in my opinion, which is to prep your novel. Now, whether you are a pantser where you fly by the seat of your pants and you don't do a lot of planning or you're a plotter, it's still important if you want to write 50,000 words in 30 days to know what you're writing about, which project you're going to write and have as many details about the characters and the story itself as you can. So here are a few tips, but I will have more in-depth videos coming throughout the month, how to actually create scene cards, index cards, um, how to outline your novel and map out your entire book. But I also have an entire series here on YouTube called How to Plot Your Novel, and that comes with an amazing free download for plotting your novel that you can get for free when you sign up for my newsletter. You'll get 
access to all of these free resources. So definitely sign up there. But when it comes to prepping your novel, some of the most important things to keep in mind are first pick your project, decide which book you're going to write. It could be the next book in an existing series, or it could be a totally new idea. But if you're going to write 50,000 words in 30 days, you need to pick the idea you're most excited to write. Something that when you close your eyes, you can see it happening in your mind like a movie. You want to get to know these characters. It gets you pumped up and excited to write because if you pick something that just is not that interesting to you, you're going to have a hard time sticking to it throughout the month. Create character sheets. Make a list of your main characters and what you know about them so far. Go into as much detail as you can, and it also helps to make a list, I think, of random names to pull from as you write, because inevitably those new characters will appear as you start writing and you'll have to name them. Another thing you might wanna do is color code. So I like to assign a color for each point of view character when I'm writing multiple POV characters. As of right now, I'm planning to work on a book that is a single POV, but we'll see as we get closer to Nano which book I'm going to be working on. But use colors that you already have available in your favorite pens, matching index cards, or any stickers that you have. Alternately, you can assign a color code for different types of scenes or different parts of the book. So put some thought into how to visually arrange your plotting notes so that it makes it more fun, more colorful, and easier to read. Create an outline of your main plot points. So I find it helpful to map out the main plot points of the book. So that opening hook, the first doorway at the end of act one, a few details of the challenges and tests that are going to happen at the beginning of act two, the midpoint, which is that moment that kind of turns the whole story on its head or is a very emotional looking in the mirror kind of story beat, the second doorway, and of course the black moment. I also will like to make a few notes about how the story is going to resolve and how my characters will change throughout the story. Again, if you want detailed help with this, download my Plot Your Novel workbook because it will be super helpful. There's also an entire series of videos here and I will link that playlist for you below on how to plot your novel and I think this might be something you'll find super helpful. Like I said, I will be doing a more in-depth video on mapping out your novel next week. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel for more of that Preptober goodness. I also like to put as many details of the scenes I can already imagine in my head onto index cards. That way, when I start writing, all I have to do is pick up an index card from the stack and start writing that scene. Sketch out as many scenes as you can imagine in your head. Even if you don't know the exact order that these scenes will go in, you can arrange them later, but ideally, I like to include which characters are going to be involved in this scene, what's the main conflict, what's the main purpose, and then what's the main action of the scene, what's actually happening, and how does it fit into the story. For me, the more detailed I can get on these scene cards, the better off I'm going to be when it comes to keeping up that momentum. Because the number one thing that stops me from writing throughout the month is that I don't know what happens next. So these scene cards are super helpful. Complete any research you think you might need to write your novel. Print out maps, do some searching about how far one thing is from another, research any type of historical facts or information about a city. Anything you can think of that you might need to know to make your story great will be good to research. And of course, it's important to think about world building. Another freebie that I have for you in that resource library is from a recent series that I did here on YouTube about planning and writing a series of books. And in that I discuss world building and there is a series planner and a series Bible checklist that goes into some details about how to world build and the kinds of things you'll need to decide. Definitely download that and start thinking about the town you're writing, the culture and relationships, the government. For fantasy novels, this could be anything from how your magic system works to everything about the type of land you're writing, what types of creatures exist there, the magic, the colors, and basically anything you might need to know about your story world. 
the more you can know before you start writing, the easier it's going to be to hit that 50,000 word mark. The fifth and final tip that I have for you today is to prep your space. So think about where you're going to mostly be writing. Is it going to be on one specific desktop computer with a desk around you? Will you be using your laptop at the kitchen table or your tablet on your bed? What's your main writing space and how can you set that up to make it feel really good, to make it really comfortable and healthy space for you and put some time and thought into it. Even if you're traveling around from space to space, it's still important to make sure that you have maybe a little pencil pouch that has all of your little tools in it so that you can carry it around with you and you're not constantly searching for your binder or anything like that. Or you could maybe have a planner caddy or some kind of specific backpack that you put everything into so that you can move things around easily. If you're going to be writing a lot in bed, you're going to be logging a ton of hours. So make sure you have some comfortable pillows to prop yourself up. Make sure you have the right mouse and everything is set up. Test it ahead of time to make sure that you're comfortable and you're taking your health into consideration. This is all about ergonomics too. So make sure your chair is good. Make sure your monitor is the correct height. Make sure everything that you can control is exactly the way you want it before the month begins. I also highly recommend that you create a space that inspires you. So whether it's hanging a photo of your favorite book cover up by your desk or including maybe some of the fun posters that I've put into your Preptober checklist, or maybe it's going to be making a mock cover of your own book and putting it up somewhere that you can see it or taping it to the front of your laptop case, but make your space inspiring. I like to have all my favorite little doodads like Hello Kitty things and Tokidokis, some of my favorite crystals and other things that tend to make me feel happy and really set the mood, which brings me to the final part of setting up your space, which is the vibe. So make sure that your space is nice and clean, that it feels the way you need it to feel. Get your favorite fuzzy blanket or turn on some fairy lights, get your favorite scent going, an essential oil burner or a candle, and really set the mood of your space. Because if you can have a space that feels really good, that you're excited to go into and to write in, you're going to want... <laughs> Sorry, you could hear the baby out there. But if you have a space that feels really good and inviting, inspires you, and has just that kind of cozy writer vibe, you're so much more likely to spend time there. So like I said, even if you're moving from space to space, there are still ways that you can carry some of your favorite things around with you. So have some way to keep all of that together so it's easy to transport from room to room. Or if you're lucky enough to have a dedicated space in your home, that you can set up exactly the way you want it. I recommend taking a day or two to really clear everything off and make sure that every single piece on your desk or in your space, everything that's hanging up, take some time and care to make sure that it's exactly the way you want it to be so that when it's time to write, you are ready to go. Okay, you guys, that wraps up our video on how to prep for NaNoWriMo. So you've got these five steps. All of these things are listed as a checklist for you to go in and check each one off as you get prepared for NaNo in my Preptober planner that you can download when you join my mailing list. The link is down below for you to go ahead and sign up there. Like I said, you'll also get access to all of my plotting notes and my series planner, world building stuff. There's tons of free resources in there that will help you get ready for NaNoWriMo. And take a look around my channel because I have plotting, pacing, series, and world building videos around here on Heart Breathing. So I hope that you'll subscribe and hang out with us for a little while longer. Inside this Preptober planner, I do have some special word count trackers and things. And I know some of you may have questions about how exactly do you fill that out? So make sure that you come back for more of my Preptober videos coming up because I'm going to walk you through exactly how to use all of these free downloads. And I honestly cannot wait for what is coming up. I love 
NaNoWriMo. I'm super passionate about this as a way to connect with other writers, to get inspired every year, and to really test the limits of your own perfectionism and what tends to hold us back as writers often, which is just being afraid to get the words down on the page because we're afraid they're not going to come out right. Well, when it comes to NaNo, you don't have time to worry about it. You just have to get those words on the page. So if you're looking forward to more tips, not only on how to prepare for NaNoWriMo, but how to get past those moments of doubt, how to put yourself in the right mindset, how to color code and keep track of your word count throughout the month. I hope that you'll subscribe, like this video, comment down below and let me know what you're doing to prepare and what you're going to be writing for NaNoWriMo. I can't wait to hear more. So hopefully we'll see you again in my next video. Thank you.